what are the most popular crypto trade strategies or indicators and what are the differences between indicators and strategies so basically a strategy is an overall approach that may incorporate various indicators analysis methods decision making processes and an indicator is a tool for analyzing market data and informing trade decisions they often they're often used as a broader trading strategy so some of the most popular trading strategies are hold or hold on for dear life which is very simple buy and hold a cryptocurrency regardless of the short-term price fluctuation which to do this you have to be very certain that cryptocurrency asset won't reach zero anytime soon on your lifetime day trading involves making multiple trades within a single day to profit from short-term price movements swing trading aims to capture great gains from price swings over a period of days or weeks scalping involves making numerous trades to profit from small price changes arbitrage taking advantage of price differences across different exchanges so popular indicators so these are strategies that are very popular I'm going to be building a trade bot for scalping arbitrage and we'll see how it goes popular indicators are moving average helps identify trends by smoothing out the price data relative strength index measures the speed and change of price movements Bollinger Bands shows volatility and potential overbought oversold conditions MACD moving average convergence divergence helps identify trend changes and momentum Fibonacci rest retracement Fibonacci retracement used to identify potential supports and resistance levels volume indicates the strength of price movements stochastic oscillator compares a closing price to its range over a specific period okay so let's explain this in layman's terms moving averages think of it like a smoothed out line that follows the price it helps you see the overall direction without getting distracted by small bumps there are two main types simple moving average the average price over a set number of days exponential moving average similar but gives more weight to recent prices relative strength index imagine a speedometer for price changes it goes from 0 to 100 if it's above 70 to the asset might be overbought too expensive it's if it's below 30 it might be oversold too cheap so then we have bollinger bands picture a river a river with flexible banks the middle is like the average price and the banks expand on contract based on how crazy the price is acting if the price touches a bank it might bounce back MACD moving average convergence divergence this is like watching two race cars when the faster car short-term average crosses the slower car long-term average it might signal a change in direction Fibonacci retracement imagine a ladder where each step is a specific percentage like 20 30 50 traders think prices might pause or reverse at these steps volume this is simply how much of the asset is being traded high volume usually means something important is happening stochastic oscillator this is like thermometer that measures how hot or cold the price is compared to its recent range it goes from 0 to 100 like RSI so these indicators don't predict the future they're tools that help traders make educated guesses about what might happen next it's a, a bit like weather forecasting it's useful but it's not accurate so heads up with that okay so what are the best programming languages to build a trade bot using this popular indicators so I'm gonna go into risk management 
to control the, the losses and try to be profitable more consistently instead of trying to make huge wins. So the best languages, programming languages are Python number one, which is beginner friendly and data analyst friendly. Widely considered the best choice for trade bots, extensive libraries for financial analysis, dedicated libraries for trading and backtesting, easy to read and write, great for prototyping. And then we have this other guy, C++, excellent for high frequency trading due to its speed, good for complex performance, critical systems, steeper learning curve, yeah, unless you're a CS grad, so I'm a CS grad, so it doesn't really matter. And then we have Java, robust and widely used in enterprise environments, good performance, extensive libraries, platform independent, are specialized for statistical computing and graphics. Excellent for data analysis and visualization. We get the same with Python, just for the record. Many fine and specific packages available. JavaScript, good for creating web-based trading interfaces, can handle real-time data well with its event-driven architecture. Large ecosystem of packages, of course, it's JavaScript and Node. And um, each language has its strengths and weaknesses, but Python is often the top choice for several reasons. Ease of use and readability, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> rich ecosystem for financial data science libraries, strong community support, flexibility for both rapid prototyping and production ready code. So what do I need to do a HFT, high frequency trading? So high frequency trading sounds like you need a lot of, of investing. I do have a big powerful PC that has over 128 gigabytes of RAM and a super high-end Threadripper, but uh, the network and the latency right now is something that I I don't want to complicate myself. I just want to learn the basics and then we could try doing an HFT bot, basically high frequency trading bot. We just want to start, get our feet wet, understand the basics, and then we can go into the heavy duty high frequency trading stuff. <coughs> So, we could also do high frequency trading with Python. There are libraries, there are graphical user interfaces. There's all this nice stuff. So, yes, starting with Python is easier. Rich ecosystem, rapid prototyping, community support, versatility, integration. Where could I deploy my Python trade bot? So we could deploy it on AWS, which I wouldn't recommend because they charge you for anything and it's super hard to stop them. And Microsoft Azure, it's not hard, it's just annoying. They're just annoying. They charge you for a lot of stuff and it's like overly complicated. It cuts you off guard, so not fun. And there's crypto specific platforms like Tree Comas. Humming, but these platforms offer bot hosting specifically specifically for crypto trading. So we could also containerize our, our bot and provide consistency across development and production environments, which is why I love using Docker. So we when, we, when we're deploying, we gotta focus on this important factors. Latency, how close is the server to the exchanges you're trading on? Reliability, does the platform offer high output times? Uptimes, uh, scalability, can you easily scale up if your bot becomes more resource intensive? Cost, how does the pricing align with your budget and expected trading volume? S security, what security measures does the platform offer to protect your bot and API keys? For beginners, a simple VPS or a basic cloud instance is often a good starting point. As you grow more advanced, you might consider moving to a more robust solution. So, that's where we're at. We answered all these questions and let's get started on the next video.